My name is Zach Di Maria, and I'm the head of CG at Jam. Jam's a visual effects studio in Culver City, and we focus mainly on commercials. We also do some episodic and film, and some special projects. We do work for all kinds of companies. Um, we do a lot of car commercials, things like Kia or Lexus or Toyota. Um, do things for Amazon, Oikos, just all kinds of different companies. We use Houdini in almost every aspect of our pipeline. Uh, we use it for lighting and rendering, effects, procedural modeling. We're all Houdini generalists, and that's something that we really like is that once you know one aspect of Houdini, you can do all these other aspects, and they really all merge together. So we are able to work on a wide variety of styles of projects because each person can do all of these aspects together. And there's a seamless handoff between these areas that I think makes Houdini super powerful. My name is Ben Martin. I'm a lead artist at Jam. Some of the effects assets that we had for the Monopoly Go commercial were, um, you know, a lot of flying money. We had a, a big uh, chest of money that the Monopoly Go character is kind of laying in. And then um, we had a cool sequence where there's a lot of fireworks, and there's a, a couple of money cannon shots, and we also had uh, some icing effects, so like some simulations of icing. The icing shot was kind of interesting because we had to art direct the look of the icing, so it had to be in the shape of an M. And then it also had to be kind of scooped up by Jason's finger. And then I used Flip to, um, you know, to simulate the icing with high viscosity and created like kind of a, an M-shaped mold to pull back to create the M. So it was kind of a going back and forth between, um, you know, procedural noise and then also like Flip simulation. My name is Logan Pittman. I'm a senior lighting TD at Jam Visual. I think for me specifically, one of the more particularly challenging elements was handling the environments that we were creating in CG. Um, we had so many different variations of buildings, skyscrapers, neighborhood homes. It became a challenge to really find a way to flexibly handle that many assets without sort of overloading a singular scene and that became an interesting problem to solve. So using Houdini to help solve this challenge, we found that having a straightforward but pretty robust pipeline at the core to be able to hand assets from one artist to another, department to department, kind of laid the foundation to be able to say, here's a quite large amount of data we need to handle in one go, but we can streamline the process, trim it down, and make it much more flexible for a single individual to sort of customize it as needed and make that fit into each shot. One of the best aspects of Houdini for us is just how non-destructive Houdini can be. We're able to take an asset, have somebody work on the asset while also look deving the asset all at the same time. And then if there's any changes from client, um, we're able to make those very quickly because of the procedural nature of Houdini. It's probably one of the biggest appeals for me is that like, you do have that say of, I can go down and access sort of that base level of your geometry, your assets, and really kind of work at the core while still having both that high level and low level functionality. I'm confident that we'll continue to use Houdini forever. I think the aspects where I'm most excited to grow with it are utilizing Solaris even more um, and also getting into character animation with KinFX. It's something we've been very excited for and keeping our eye closely on and are excited to, to finally uh, bring character animation into Houdini.